Welcome back to Haunted and Historic Australia for another episode from the mysterious tales of the land down under. In this episode, we take a look at what happened to Margaret Clemens, the lady in the swamp. The mystery of the old lady of the swamp remains unsolved. The day before Margaret Clement disappeared, never to be seen or heard of again, she was as usual padding around her decaying former mansion in Gippsland. 70-year-old eccentric spinster, known as the Old Lady of the Swamp, was dressed in ragged clothes, and on her stockingless feet she wore an ancient pair of men's boots. About 160 kilometres from Melbourne, the house was called Tullery. It had once been the luxurious homestead of a successful sheep and cattle station of 700 hectares. It had been filled with hand-carved furniture, Oriental tapestries, imported carpets, fine china and glassware, costly paintings and antiques. Margaret Clement, in the carefree years before World War I, had entertained there with banquets and garden parties. The elites of Melbourne society rolled up the driveway in gleaming carriages to be greeted by a charming, cultured hostess in a Paris gown. Now she was living as a penniless recluse in a dilapidated wreck of a house, alive with bats, birds, rats, spiders and sometimes snakes in the swamps that surrounded it. But she was far from unhappy. She was just as content with the loneliness, the poverty, the eerie decay of her last years as she had been while enjoying the luxury of her youth. She'd once said, I will never leave this place. I love it now more than ever. Then came one May day or night in 1952 when Margaret Clement vanished. Her disappearance remains to this day one of Australia's most baffling and macabre mysteries. Despite intensive searching by hundreds of men in the two kilometre wide slime covered swamps that surrounded Tullery, she was never found. Police thought she might have been kidnapped or murdered. People who knew her scoffed at the theory that she had fallen in the swamps and drowned. They pointed out that she knew every metre of every path through them. No real evidence of foul play was ever discovered, but neither was Margaret Clement's body when the swamps were subsequently drained and the land returned to agriculture. Whatever her fate, shy, reclusive Margaret Clement's life outdid any novel written by the Bronte sisters. Her story really began at the famous Long Tunnel Mine at the gold town of Walhalla in Victoria. In the last 30 years of the 19th century, it paid out about three million in dividends. Peter Scott Clement, a Victorian farmer, was a large shareholder and a director of the company. The wealth he derived from the Long Tunnel Mine enabled him to buy the station, Tullery, on the Lower Tarwin River in Gippsland in 1907. Clement poured money into making Tullery's a show place. He spent $50,000 on furniture, carpets and tapestries for the 17-room brick homestead. The lush rye glass and clover paddocks were stocked with stud sheep and cattle. A landscaped garden which surrounded the house with lawns and fountains and flower beds cost a small fortune and took a near army of gardeners to maintain. Widower Peter Clement intended Tullery to be a luxury home for his two unmarried daughters. He planned to make it a large-scale grazing and breeding property which would keep them in comfort for the rest of their lives. There were four Clement daughters. Two had made satisfactory marriages, but it seemed likely that Margaret and Jeannie, aged 25 and 27 respectively, when their father bought Tullery, would remain spinsters. All the Clement girls had been educated at expensive Melbourne schools. They had travelled extensively both in Europe and the East. Locals in nearby Buffalo and Wanthaggy knew the Clement sisters as two daintily dressed ladies with parasols sitting regally in their car 
while the chauffeur collected their shopping from the tradespeople. Then, during World War I, Peter Clement died. That upset all plans he had made for his two unmarried daughters. They knew nothing about running a rural property, and different managers they employed were insufficient and dishonest. Tullery began to deteriorate. By the 1920s, the sisters were not bothering with a manager, and the rest of the outside staff also drifted away. Pastures began overrun with weeds. Drainage channels became silted up and started to flood the land and create huge swamps. Running short of money, Margaret and Jeannie Clement sold all the stock on Tullery and dismissed their house servants. In 1923, they began mortgaging different blocks of the property. Ultimately, they owed about $26,000 to banks and other lenders. By 1930, the sisters had no equity left in the property. The mortgagees took possession and sold their interest to a Melbourne solicitor for $27,500. He in turn sold it to a Gippsland farmer, Stanley Livingston, in 1950. The Clements, however, had a legal caveat against the formal transfer of the land and remained in possession of the homestead. For years no one saw Jeannie Clement, who apparently had become an invalid. The younger sister Margaret maintained their only contact with the outside world. Once a week, she took off the men's boots she wore, pinned up her skirt, and waded through the swamp to the nearest neighbour, Bernard Buckley. The sisters had an agreement with him to purchase their provisions in town. They lived solely on canned goods, soup, meat and stews, and the tins accumulated in a huge pile outside the homestead's back door. Occasionally, Margaret tramped the 12 kilometres into Buffalo to do her own shopping. She carried her purchases home in a sugar bag on her back. On one such excursion, she collapsed at the edge of the swamp on her way home. A nearby farmer, Keith Fisher, found her lying unconscious. She soon came round and accepted his help through the swamp to Tullerie, but she refused to consider consulting a doctor, and within a week, was out and about again. One July day in 1950, she knocked on Bernard Buckley's door and informed him that her sister Jeannie had died. It took eight men to carry her body out through the swamp in a coffin. Margaret attended the funeral at sale and then returned to Tullery to live alone, except for an old dog which she called Dingo. A police officer from Buffalo called on her and tried to persuade her to leave the old home, or at least have someone stay with her for company. No, she told him empathetically, a person has only one life to live, and I am living and enjoying mine. It is the way I want to live. Whether other people agree with it or not, doesn't matter. The officer again mentioned a companion, and she said, I have Dingo, he's a good friend, but even if I had no dog, I'd still be content to carry on here until my time comes. You see, Tullery has so many wonderful memories for me. I love the place, even as it is now. Once a reporter from Melbourne paper sending a story on the Lady of the Swamp paid her a visit. She answered his questions, even when he asked if she had even thought of marrying. There have been men in my life, she told him, quite a lot of them, but they weren't very important, and I never considered marrying any of them. Margaret Clement spent her time reading the large library of spine-chilling murder and detective stories, including all the Sherlock Holmes books with which Tullery was stocked. One night, as she was immersed in one of her th these thrillers by the light of a hurricane lamp, there was an unearthly shriek from the depths of the swamp. It must have been her dog Dingo being attacked by some wild animal. The next morning she found him where he had crawled up to her door. His throat had been clawed and almost eaten away. In July 1951, Stanley Livingston and his wife, who had bought the mortgages on Tullery from the Melbourne solicitor who held them, settled on a portion of the land still above water and built themselves a shack. Livingston started a long-term project to drain the land. He didn't interfere with Margaret Clement, 
and gradually he and his wife won her friendship. The Livingston invited her to meals with them and occasionally she accepted. She went for Sunday drives in their car and let them buy her a battery radio. Responding to the couple's kindness, she agreed to approve the formal transfer of the property to them. In return, they were to build her a comfortable cottage into which she would move so they could restore the homestead to something like its original glory. Before that happy ending to the last years of the old recluse, however, the affair took another twist when she disappeared without trace. Stanley Livingston called at the homestead one morning to ask her to dine with them that evening, but there was no answer to his knock and no sign of Margaret Clement. He then recalled that the previous night his three dogs had suddenly burst into loud and prolonged barking. Police were called and for weeks up to 100 men searched and dragged the swamp for Margaret Clement's body. It was believed she might have got lost, fallen into the water and drowned. But the subsequent draining of the swamp without revealing a body showed that this could not have been so. Rumours that she'd been kidnapped or met foul play then began to circulate. Mrs Livingston recalled that a few weeks earlier she had accompanied them to a nearby bushfire. While the men were fighting the fire, she and Margaret sat in the Livingston's car. Several strangers come up and ordered Margaret out of the car. She refused and seeing Stanley Livingston approaching, they went away. Other people then revealed that a couple of weeks earlier a big black car drove into Buffalo. Three men in it inquired the way the house where the lady of the swamp lives. Newspapermen dug up an old report that somewhere on Tullery there was supposed to be buried a small fortune in sovereigns. Back in 1877 it had been owned by a Martin Weinberg who masterminded the robbery of 4,000 sovereigns from a steamer en route between Sydney and Melbourne. The police later arrested Weinberg and recovered 1,200 sovereigns buried at Tullery. The balance of the loot was never found. With the disappearance of Margaret Clement, it was suggested that she might have met foul play at the hands of criminals whom she surprised as they tried to find the long lost sovereigns. Every angle of the riddle of Margaret Clement's disappearance was exhaustively investigated. Police couldn't find any definitive solution. To this day, it remains a mystery. A skeleton of a female found on a beach only a few kilometres from Tullery in 1958 was expected to close the case, but experts were divided as to whether the remains were those of a white or an Aboriginal woman. At a subsequent inquest into the remains, the coroner found but the evidence did not enable him to say who the deceased was or when, where or by what means she came to her death or whether such death was accidental or otherwise. What a sad tale that a lady just wanted to stay at her home but seems to have been forced out one way or another. The community thought she was mad and many people came and interviewed her to find out why she would live like this. She said she just wanted to be at this place, this place she'd called home for many decades. Her family had lived there and died there. She just wanted to be there. It does seem that she met with foul play. One thing for sure is that most people believe it was Mr Livingston that did away with her. He was violent to his wife Esme as she would later say to other people in town. He had everything to gain by Miss Clement dying. Esme, his wife, even said to another lady in town that she was quite jealous at the time because he was sleeping with Miss Clement. Now, whether that was true or not is pretty strange, but it just goes to show how crazy some of these tales can get. Or was it someone dead set on finding the stolen sovereigns? It couldn't have been an animal, otherwise... Her body would have been found and had she drowned in the swamp when they'd drained it, they would have found her remains. Were her remains that found on a beach near to where Tullery Homestead was? Or is her body still out there somewhere, buried? 
in the Mount Buffalo National Park that was quite close to where she lived. It is quite the mystery. And the homestead actually ran tours up until just recently. Now there is a family living in there. I wonder if Margaret still roams the property in spirit. There hasn't been anything said, but for someone who loved the property so much, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. We hope you enjoyed this episode on the Swamp Lady, Margaret Clemens. Stay tuned for many more mysterious tales from the land down under, as well as some ghost stories we will be featuring very soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and hit that notification bell so you know when we're posting more.